everyone, Happy New Year, and welcome to episode 18 of Guild Gab, first one for 2015. Woo Today we are going to be woo, celebrating, talking about Winter's Day, because we could not all get together over the busy holiday season, that is mostly my fault, I was super busy, but, uh, so... We are going to talk about Winter's Day, we're going to talk about this crazy point of no return, what is going on with uh, Season 2, and uh, maybe some possible big announcements coming at PAX South, oh? and uh, lots of other fun stuff. So, let me introduce my hosts. Unfortunately, we have uh, no video at the moment, but uh, Ritlock, yes. to my <laughs> left here, <laughs> is Akasaurus Rex. How are you all doing? Yeah. <laughs> I think he prefers to be Ritlock. I tried to do my first Ritlock brimstone voice now. <laughs> <laughs> Down below me here is Corvus of Corvus Plays. Hi. <laughs> He's a man of few words. Hi. <laughs> and over there is Alex of the RPG Shack. I'm an assassin. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Once again, we have all four of us, so this is awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Let's get started with Winter's Day. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things, I, it, it took me a couple of days to figure this out. One of the things I'm really surprised at is you remember how in a couple of the other Living Story bits, when you did the dailies for the particular festival, it tots it up against your overall achievement path mm -hmm. for that festival. The dailies don't do it on this one. Which is a shame. I didn't think of that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't particularly mind. Um, it just means I keep doing the, the, the jumping puzzle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. to slowly I still have not up. completed that. I got so <laughs> close last night. So close. Joy, it's, it, it, it's the boxes. Like, the, the, the uh. jumping on the snowflakes, and once I'm past the boxes, it's fine. Oh, hint, by the way, do it on a Guardian, because you get a free Aegis. So if you get hit by the blowy snowman thing, Oh. It just it just takes away your ages. Um, ah, let's let's get that. Oh, but, mm. oh. but, the, but yeah, the, <laughs> it's just the <laughs> it's it's the boxes because because nobody's coordinated enough to say hi guys. Why don't we all jump at the same time and then <laughs> let's stop the boxes exploding for each other? Little bit of teamwork and everyone's just like. <laughs> 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 it's just like a mad scramble. How, up how the is side that? How do they? How do they go? <laughs> yeah, can we see that again? Excellent. <laughs> it's it's bananas, but um, aside from that, like even though it's it's the same stuff as last year, um, mm -hmm. we get a new type. We, we we get a new Winter's Day title, which mm -hmm. is nice, and um, yeah, it's good fun. Toy Apocalypse is always a bit of a giggle, though, isn't it? So, yeah. <laughs> mm. Are you are you guys disappointed a little bit that there was there's not as many new rewards and stuff as there was for <laughs> Halloween? For Halloween, it was like the same thing, but I felt like there was a lot of new rewards and yeah. new things to kind of keep keep you playing and keep you working towards something. Right. Whereas Winter's Day, I feel like if you don't buy it from the gem store in game, it's like I'll go do my dailies, but there's nothing else I'm really working towards yeah. except like mm -hmm. the title. This, no, I agree. Right. There is the um, there's yeah. the mm -hmm. there's the Imperial Star thing, isn't there? For oh doing... yeah! Oh, there you go. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, you're for, totally for doing, right. For doing the Gronk thing, I'm I'm I've been not doing that, so I'm actually recording it, <laughs> doing it at the moment. So unsurprisingly, everyone's done it, and no one's watching the videos. But um, but yeah, I, I think it's really cool. I got this little thing in in my mail, and uh, there's the Grawl sat in your home instance. So I, mm. I really like that, giving a little bit of story, but um. What what did you actually get in in Halloween this year? Because I I wasn't around for it. Um, there was an outfit that you could earn in. Uh, the first there was a in bunch game, of the only in game outfit. Yeah, and there was a bunch of minis and stuff. I actually like the the star <clears throat> rewards for Winter's Day a lot better than the Halloween ones, but yeah. Winter's Day still does feel a bit empty. It, it's a more useful yeah. reward. Yeah. Um, but uh, as far as, I, I feel like like you said, there was minis, there was lots of in-game minis to get, there was an, an in-game outfit uh, and stuff like that, whereas Winter's Day, I don't feel like there's anything new that's not in the gem store. There was new minis <laughs> and a new outfit in the gem store, but not in-game. There's, yeah. there's, um, there's the, the, the uh, you get you get a new mini for doing the, um, the, the wooden toy skin one, yeah. I think. 
and you get the the oh. gift box one for doing the tonic tippler. The collections. The collection as well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but again, like m m most of that, can you can just kind of like buy most of it on the trading post. Yeah. And uh, but maybe that's just me and being lazy, and I don't actually want <laughs> to. Um... Well, that was it. Like the 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 toy weapons one was so easy to complete because I mean even now they're they're soup they're like dirt cheap on the gem yeah. uh, on the trading post and yeah. stuff. You could finish that collection in in a minute. It's yeah. it's. It's kind of a shame that there wasn't stuff to work towards. Like at Halloween, collecting all the candy corn. Okay, there was the big farm and the labyrinth and stuff, but like, it it was like fun to do. Um, buying stuff off the trading posts isn't isn't a fun way to complete a collection. Nah. And um, <laughs> you know, and, and you can earn them from like presents and stuff, but it just why would you if you can buy them all in yeah. thirty seconds? Yeah. Well, the um the. The weird thing that I've I've found in my guild is that we um our guild bank is it's got last time I checked it's got ninety of the collection starters and we've got anywhere from seventy five to two hundred of each skin <laughs> just sat there. Yeah. Mm. And, I mean, hopefully, eventually the prices will go up and we can sell them for a bit of gold to do some events and that. But yeah. yeah um, but aside from I've I have kind of enjoyed running around and building the snowmen and throwing. Oh yeah, I, I yeah, enjoy doing the dailies. Fun, yeah. That's basically what I do every day. That's that's my winter's day thing, is doing the winter's day dailies. And that is fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you guys have any tips for not sucking at the bell choir? Because I just I just, I, I, I just can't do it. I just can't do it at all. It's very, like, I'm normally really good at rhythm games, yeah, but I too. find bell choir hard for a couple reasons. It's not you have uh, the way it's laid out. It's like it goes from being very spread out and down to like the way it does that rather than like a, a guitar hero or something where it's coming straight down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing that I find the trouble find tr the trouble with with bell choir is that I don't know when exactly to hit the number. Exactly. Yeah. There's no. It's not when it crosses the white line. It's not immediately when it crosses it. It's not. It, it's like it's some. At some point, when it's in the blue area around you, but it's, but they disappear so fast. It's, plus, you have lag to deal with. Yeah, even Input if it's even slight, like that. that that messes with you with a ryth rhythm game, and as well as you are, you're not listening to a song and hitting the notes. You're making the notes, and if yeah, someone yeah. next to you is really <laughs> messing up, that can throw <laughs> you off. Maybe, so it maybe, is maybe hard. That's like, I can just blame everyone next to me. <laughs> so, I'm actually doing this uh, right. And I, I looked at the achievement, and it was like, you've played three out of ten notes correctly. It was like, oh, well, Phil, 30%. And then I looked at the total, and it's like 500 or something. Like, <laughs> you know what? I've got better things to do with my time. <laughs> oh, is, um, does anyone know if the unbreakable, sorry, the infinite bell thing is back in this year? Uh, I think it is. I think it is, yeah. Cause, yeah. Because no. like there's 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 some there's some decent loot going about. Um, there's yeah there's that there's there's a few bits and pieces from the from the exchange dude. I'd I'd like. Um, yeah. What about the new the the Winter Stay weapon skins though? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh the Black Lion I, Winter Stay yeah, weapons. Those like are like very them. cool. Yeah. I need to decide. Actually, I actually forgot about those. I have some tickets. I need to decide if I want to buy some of those. <laughs> Because those are cool. They're like little snow globes, and when it moves, like you can see the yeah. snow inside yeah. it. It's cool. I really, really like those. Um, but I've been I've been stuck at like eight or nine ticket scraps for months now. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! This thing's gonna be a little real beep to <laughs> gather around. <laughs> but I, I think. I mean, in in terms of, I've, I've not been able to to get that to get on that much over Christmas. So perhaps the fact that there isn't that much as perhaps as much content there as we were maybe expecting from uh, a holiday update, um, <clears throat> maybe they were kind of compensating for that. Because I think in in our last guild, in the last guild gap we did, we um, you got you guys were um, saying that the. Uh, that the next part of the actual living story was going to drop at the same time as well. Yeah, so we'd have like just, that's what we yeah, thought. Yeah, that's what a lot of people thought. A, I think. a lot of people thought, but I guess looking back to last year and having the the kind of finale episodes into the new year, it would have made yeah. sense to expect you know this to happen. Yeah. But I, I, I think the reason I the reason I thought we were going to get it on the same day was just because they'd had that break. 
to resume oh, the yeah. second half, and I didn't I think, expect them to throw another break, you know, before they'd even finish that right. half. Right, I really think what what did it, because I was trying to think back, why, they never said that the finale was going to be on the same day as Winter's Day. Yeah. Why did we all think this? And I think the reason is because when they took the break, they called that the halfway point. Well, there exactly. There four yeah. episodes, yeah. and we kind of knew that there was going to be another four episodes, and that was the mid-season break. So mm -hmm. we thought, okay, we're yeah. going to get four episodes, and then we're going to get Winter's Day. Oh, well, they just happen to fall on the same day. Guess <laughs> yeah. we're getting both. Extra content. <laughs> I was literally, like, I got all ready. I was sitting there <laughs> waiting for the trailer to come out. <laughs> it's like 3 or 4 o'clock. We have no trailer. I'm like, what? And then they came out with the post and said January uh, 13th, I 13th, think. Yeah, uh, 13th, yeah, January 13th. Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was so I think, disappointed. I was I was quite disappointed, but I think now I it's probably. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. It's definitely now. a good thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like if it, if even if they didn't really need the time, I think it's good for hype. You mm -hmm. know, um, especially if people have been working through Winter's Day stuff, they've not had. You know, maybe they've done everything. They're waiting on this thing. I think to have a new episode, which is also a finale, you know, with some big lore implications and a crap ton of winter winter's day stuff it would have kind of almost been too much yeah um to really be able to yeah, draw a focus on yeah. the benefits of either things coming out you know people want to enjoy winter's day but they're not going to enjoy winter's day if they're playing loads of new content yeah um, yeah you know and i think it's best is probably a good idea to spread this kind of stuff out yeah, yeah. well i mean as, as as well as that i think what they want to try and do they want to try and pull people away from the silver wastes farm at the moment yeah because can you just imagine if uh, I think you know in in the past you know you know when they took like the summer break and there was like the World v World <laughs> tournaments and aside from that there yeah. wasn't yeah. really a lot going on all of a sudden to kind of drop two patches on top of you it's like a yeah. massive spin. And that's another thing as well because they they did the PVP changes and they're in that kind of trial period for the new PVP system now. Mm -hmm. So to have three things going on at once, no one's really going to be as focused on either one as, as they kind of should be, especially if they're testing a whole new system out for PvP, so... Right. Yeah, it's definitely a good idea. Plus, people are going to get... People will have got Guild Wars 2 for Christmas and stuff, and so <clears throat> it's going to be so cool for a new player to, you know, to have this, you know, potentially huge thing going on in the world yeah. Um, oh, yeah. a few weeks after they've got it, so... Plus, they have yeah, been, really they've really decision. been pushing this year for new players, and mm -hmm. you have all those new players trying to keep up with this living world, trying to learn what Season 1 was about, trying to do their personal story, trying to level up. It's just so much that I think mm -hmm. this was a great, this break was really good to help new players catch up. <clears throat> yeah, Before 100%. potentially in January, something else huge just happens. <laughs> But no, I, th I think you're right. I mean, there's been a huge influx of new players this year. I think the well, there was the Chinese launch back in was it April, April yeah, or May. Yeah. I think so it was I, th April. I think that was an extra what two or three million players there straight away. And even I, even what, uh, what I've been doing in the game, I've been slowly leveling my alts and just kind of messing around and not really necessarily doing anything that's aside from you know racking up the achievement points and that oh, kind yeah. of thing. So, yeah, I mean. At, at points, I th it's it's a month you've got actually got to remember to play the game. You know. You... Uh oh. <laughs> what happened? And with a slight weird technical glitch, um, <laughs> we're back and moving on. Um, <laughs> Alex lost power there for a second, and it was really funny, actually. Um, but... <laughs> Um, so, what do you guys think about um, this uh, announcement about uh, Arena Net being at PAX South? It could be anything. I mean, awesome. a lot of people are obviously like, you know, it's going to be an expansion and stuff, but yeah. they they said that it's going to be like a new way for an MMO to develop its uh, universe. Okay. And they also threw in that comment of saying that you know, the living world or living story was just the start. Yeah, that's what interested so, me. Like, you you haven't even yeah. seen what we got in our in it our would, pocket. It would kind of it would kind of make sense f if they were to basically deliver an expansion, but do it in a similar way that they're doing the living world. Yeah, yeah. But but I'm not too sure how how well that would go down because, you know, like they could just keep rolling out zones every two weeks or something like that. But 
I feel like doing that really loses like the sense of exploration and stuff because it means everyone's you know running through at the same pace. They're desperately trying to finish the zone and before the next zone comes out. And then as soon as the season is over and everything's been delivered, everyone's kind of already done anything. Mm. Um, but if they were to release a huge chunk, then people could go through at their own pace and it would you know you'd feel like you were exploring and stuff. Yeah. So I don't know. I I don't know how likely it is that they're going to be doing that. I mean, I think at, at the moment, I'm, I'm sure I said this in, in, previ in a previous Guild Gab, that we're at the point where the only three new areas that we've had since launch are solely farmable. I mean, we've got, yeah. we've got, we've got Dry Top, we've got the Silver Wastes, and to some extent, South Sun. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. I mean, you've, you've, you've got some high end nodes there, you've got the Karka Queen. But aside from that, you're only you're you only go there if you're a bit of a glutton for punishment. Yeah, because exactly. It's it's it, it, it's it's not a place where you can viably play the game on your own. The mm -hmm. the bad yeah. the bad guys are just too hard. And I think what we're gonna need, I, what what I would love to see, I'd love to see new areas, you know, with new hearts. May, maybe even um, you know, uh, the the Tengu coming into it or something like that, and um, developing from there. But what's what it. What's what's the what's the title that they've given? It's like the point of no return or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they they keep saying that phrase. This is the point of no return. And actually, I think See, they said that it's episode eight that is the turning point. They've said like yeah, something will happen yeah. in episode eight that it, this is the turning point. Yeah. There's no going back after this. See, I, I'm trying to think of what that could possibly mean. You know, it makes me think of uh, like pre-searing Ascalon or something. You know, like yeah. a place that you can't go back to, and everything's changed afterwards. But they're not going to go and do that. They're not going to. Oh, that's interesting. You know, I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I really <laughs> don't know how they're going to deliver this stuff. Because I mean, it's obvious that their plans for this year and the following years are to add expansion content. They've said a bunch of times that they want to add, you know, all of the new stuff, new zones, new races. They've said this before. So like it's all it's all going to come down to how they deliver it and one of the main reasons for them to do an expansion arguably is money reasons. You know, like they're going to have pressure from NCSoft because gem store stuff is diminishing. It's not a super viable uh, income and um expansions are a really good way to make it ton of money and bring a bunch of new people in it lets them promote it promote the game massively you know right. they can't do that with living world episodes because right. you know no people new players aren't going to have been following the story necessarily and you know you're not going to see yeah. a huge advert on tv for an episode that's coming out um for a game but you will see stuff like you know wow's new expansion with a big trailer on tv and stuff and they're mm -hmm. so yeah. to release them essentially for free um, as just general updates is kind of unlikely in my opinion. Like I think it's not going to be doing a, a good job of bringing them in a huge ton of income and sucking new players in. I think the best way to do it would be a paid like boxed expansion. Yeah. But, right. And but I then that's going to separate the player base as yeah, well. Yeah, it's people strange aren't that be that's what people it. want. They, they're getting all this free content and, and minus new classes, new races, new professions. Um, minus that all of the content we've gotten in season one and season two, you can call that an expansion. Like, Pretty. you can say, like, if they put that in a box and gave it to us, you know, with some new races and new classes, that could have been an expansion, but they decided to do it the way they did. Well, it's funny that people want to give them money, mm -hmm. throw them money, and say, I want a box to buy. I want to buy a new expansion, that, you know, that's all contained. And like you yeah. said, that will bring publicity. And that I will think, bring players back, and that will bring new players. I think I think one of the reasons the player base are pushing for it, and certainly one of the reasons yeah. that I'm pushing for it, is that it was the model that Guild Wars 1 built yeah. itself on. And yes. like the, 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 the only true expansion to Guild Wars 1 is either North, the other mm -hmm. two are ostensibly separate started. campaigns. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I mean, I... I, I got into <clears throat> Guild Wars 1 uh, through Factions, so Factions was the first campaign that I played, and that very easily stood alone. Um, apart from prophecies, and everyone was talking about Dwayne and Balthazar, I was like, "No, but there's the Celestials in the skies. What are you talking about?" <laughs> and ev and everyone was talking about, you know, the Grand Vizier and and all this. Um, but I think the 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 buy to play model, it, like even even psychologically, if someone says, "Right, we're going to sell you this new content rather than just give it away for free," even you know, at the back of your mind, say someone says oh they're you know they're selling it to us you know that means it's going to be good that means it's going to yeah. be a ton of con you know there's going to be a ton of new permanent content <clears throat> and if they are serious about opening up um 
you know, large new chunks of the map. Yeah. I think that they have to do it, but at the same time, they've also got to be really careful about now that most of the wo- now that you can wander from one end of the world to the other, it's it's going to be kind of weird how you kind of block that content from people who ha- who haven't bought that expansion. I mean, they did it in Guild yeah. Wars right. One. They did it in Guild Wars One by you know you not being able to travel to Kainang yeah. or you not uh, being able to travel to um, uh, the other north or or wherever. Yeah. But because we've just got this whole giant world now. It's going to be weird. It's like, oh, you can go here. Oh, but you can't because you can't. You can't wander through this particular gate, or you haven't got the right pass, or something like that. There's, there's that oh. stuff with like applying value to stuff. I mean, how many of us have gotten free games and never played them? Yeah. But you yeah. buy a game, even if you don't necessarily like it at the, when you know at the start or whatever, you still play it because you've forked out money for it. That's true. And so you've assigned this value to it. Um, yeah. So I think that it's it goes the same. I think if I don't know, like say if they'd taken all of season one and two's story and put it in a box, people would have enjoyed it a lot more. They wouldn't have been so hard and critical on it, but because it's been handed to them for free, you know that they're kind of just judging everything about it. Mm. And I, I I think a box expansion is definitely the way to go. But there's like you were saying that the open world of Guild Wars Two is gonna cause a lot of problems with maybe blocking zones off. Mm. And I mean, maybe they could do it like they have Unless done with Dried Up. we go to Kantha or Lona. Yeah, exactly. Or... <laughs> but, then, but then you're alienating player bases there because is there going to be living world still going on in Tyria for new players? Right. They can't, they can't feasibly juggle two continents of living world all doing yeah. their separate things to make sure everyone's getting it. So it's, it's a really tricky thing. But the thing I mean, is, I th- I th- it's it's something they did in Guild Wars One though. I mean, if you've got, um, I think the the first big up they, update they did was the Sorrow's Furnace update, and I think that was only a few months after the game originally came out. And then it was another nine months until factions came out, and you've got the whole campaign there. And as well, you've got the two two well at that point two exceptionally overpowered classes come in in the Ritualist and the Assassin. And to me, it kind of makes sense. It's like, yeah, if, if 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 you want all this stuff, then then buy it. And like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like you were saying, Corvus, if if the gem store stuff is diminishing, and they're they're seeing falling revenues through the gem store, which I I do struggle to believe, to be honest, because yeah, it's 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 just like crack for everybody, isn't it? <laughs> it's so easy just to go, oh, I'll just drop ten pounds. I think some gems. And, I yeah. think it was just a report that said that it was. Yeah. Bringing in less money than they expected, or something like that. I mean, I doubt it's. They, you know, they add so much to it, and there's always stuff people want regularly, like keys and stuff for their black line chest. But I think it was just bringing in less money than they originally yeah. had kind of assumed it was going to. Well, you know, there's a, the, the, there's an interesting report I saw that showed that um, Guild Wars Two financially was, um, like all of their other MMO things that they're doing are are selling more than Guild Wars 2, and Guild Wars 2 is only ahead of Wildstar. Oh, really? So, um, they have incentive to try to make more monies um, yeah. from NCSoft's perspective. Um, I don't know why those other MMOs are selling, because they look boring as hell to me. But, <laughs> it's, I think um, it's probably something to do with the first 18 months of Guild Wars 2's life. All the money it made was being pumped into Ion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard that as well. <laughs> Which again, I find totally dull and boring. But yeah, it's just like um, I I like really think that they've been a little too secretive with many of their plans. Like this is all kind of exciting, what the things they're saying, but they still don't say enough. And yeah, if they it's really, like, are they like, really like, going like, to tell us like, anything? <laughs> it's like it's like it's it's like just like tell us a little more so that we have an idea that these certain things are coming, and if. Like at the PAX East stuff, if they don't announce something that gives new races and new professions, because these are the two things mm-hmm. like an MMORPG player base needs to keep going. So they'd be like, okay, now we at least got one of each of those two things. That's good. It, it makes you feel like there's more to yeah. it for meat to the, yeah. to the thing. So what, what if they announce the Mordremoth raid? Because this, this job opening <laughs> that they put... Oh, you know, yeah. th- this this was what five or six months ago now. This job it was quite a while. Yeah, if they got somebody for that to design or a team to design raid like content, and we're coming to the end of season two, if the if the announcement is right, point of no return. Yeah, we've got dungeons, but this is going to be the first of our new raid system. 
and we're going to go right. Oh, so the first cool. raid is going to be an elder dragon, and just be like, <laughs> "Let's Ooh. do it." <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> That would be really good. But I, th I think I think everything that everyone said here is is right. There's, um, if if it's something big that they're announcing at, uh, you know, a big gaming convention at the beginning of the year, it's going to have to be something that's going to go. Let's do it. Exactly. I yeah. keep hoping that it's going to coincide with <laughs> episode eight. Like I keep thinking that there's going to be like within episode eight, there's going to be like a meta. Like coming soon expansion yeah, or yeah. rating or something something and then some they almost kind of delayed it. Yeah. They almost delayed episode eight so that it could coincide with Pack South yeah. because Pack South is like what a week and a half after. It's about ten days or something. Yeah, really? after it's episode good. eight launches. So it's exciting. And it's in main events, guys. It is the only main <laughs> events main theater. Uh, presentation or whatever that's for a specific game. The rest are either for like like Penny Arcade specific stuff because it's their con yeah. or like an entire company will have some presentation and then there's oh, Guild Wars 2. It's like that's so it so almost good. doesn't fit. It almost it needs... doesn't fit unless there's going to be some gigantic thing. I'm so Hello? excited. Hello. Hey man. Yep, you're here. <laughs> it needs it, it needs to be something big. It really does. I think the, as well because I mean, if you go on Reddit and look at like w the announcement posts and stuff for this, everyone's like talking about how hyped they are, but no one wants to be because it's I know! it's kind of been a risk, you know, like to be hyped for an episode or or stuff like that. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. It's. <laughs> But the thing is, I this this is, I mean this this happens to me with all games. I love getting hyped, and even if yeah. I'm, I I mean, obviously it makes me feel even worse when I'm disappointed and yeah. crushed that the game is rubbish. But you know, I I I just love getting sucked into the hype, and I had massive Guild Wars two kind of hype before it came out, and it's more than lived up to my expectations. But I I got it for like Mass Effect three for Dragon <laughs> Age two, but I should have kept that to myself. And um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's. I, th I think like the, the community hype and the community is is overwhelmingly positive at the moment. I think that they're in they're they're in a really good place to take a lot of how the community has been feeling about the silver waste farm because a, a lot of people have been saying like this is how ore should have been when it originally launched. You know, yeah. there should have been this yeah. big sweeping events backwards and forwards, and then mm. at the end of it, a massive throwdown. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, th I think they're in a really really strong position at the moment to just go. Boom! <laughs> I think it's it, they've learned. I think they've obviously learned so much from across both of these seasons and and what yeah. kind of content people like. Yeah. Balancing these world events that anyone can join, even if they're not necessarily interested in the story, it's like a load of new mechanics mixed with really like especially with season two, really really good storytelling. Like I think with season two, they've really nailed the way they want to do it. Like mix of cutscenes and. And little secrets, you know, buried in the in the chat and stuff that you have with NPCs and stuff like the library. Um, I just think, you know, and, and references here and there. And I, there's a lot of answers that we still need for the story. But I think that's actually a good thing because it shows that the plot's not just some linear, you know, what's going on. Yeah. You know, this is what's going on. There yeah. you go. Kind of job done. They could probably cut down on the hit cliffhangers and stuff that they have. But, like, <laughs> for the most part, season two has been... Especially the first half that was incredible to play through. Like it was, it was just the first whole community was, was like, ah. good. it good. was so good. And so <laughs> I think like if they can combine all of these things, you know, add this sto uh, season two kind of s storytelling with you know the mechanics and especially the big boss fights and stuff from season one, like the marionette and stuff, yeah. the huge LA battle. Like it's just. It'd be really good to mash those together, and make like maybe a new campaign or something like that with a whole new world and a continent that does the same kind of things to you know, heart quests and vistas and secret jumping puzzles and all this stuff. Like, you know, combining the past few years, they could easily roll out an expansion that's absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and new races and, and classes and stuff. You know, it's oh, it's just what everyone's asking for, but with good reason because it's it affects every game type. There's people in PvP that want to play something fresh. There's you know, how are we going to be able to use these new skills in World v World to do cool stuff? Or you know, it, like it affects everyone. Whether because the story is you know, for the most uh, for the most part, what everyone wants as well. But like, 
there are players that only play Go Wars 2 for the PvP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think um, stuff like races and uh, classes are, you know, the first things they should throw in because it affects everyone. Yeah. And then combine fun world events for people who are interested in the story and aren't. And then the storytelling for, you know, the rest of us that are really in into that kind of thing. So they've, they've not really had a better time to throw an expansion out. And I just really hope it is an expansion and not something not that great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to be disappointed. No, uh, no, no. no. <laughs> there was something that uh, uh, Wooden Potatoes said that um, possibly like uh, something that might happen would be... Um, for the actual packed um, fleet to actually get destroyed yeah. when they make yeah. their actual um, flight in there, because like I, I kind of like that idea because if, if something like that happened and if like Traherne actually got killed and uh, like the oh whole fleet, God. most of it was totally decimated, it, it, it then <laughs> gives more upness for our characters to, yeah. to to create an even bigger, you know, martial force. Because yeah. if they stick. Mm with the whole idea of us fighting the elder dragons and this could be the, the stage in which like the the races really up their game to really unite even more than what the pact was to create a real mm. military campaign yeah um, that could really so that not so much so 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 like going to like the other continents in theory isn't like a big concern it's mostly just this idea of advancing the whole elder dragon fight so that mm -hmm. i could i i, I could kind of see that's where the uh future story uh, at least like the the near future story might be going is doing something like that let's see um, i think i think that'd be good especially head. especially considering like the the amount of people that really enjoyed silver waste because of the whole military you know yeah. kind yeah. of yeah. aspect as of soon it as you really walk joining in, you've together got this and, military base right there yeah and and that would be really cool uh, and I'm one of those people that likes, uh, I like kind of feeling bad, like, <laughs> you know, if it, you know, like, like the whole idea that maybe we, we, did, we did something bad by killing Zaitan or something like that, like playing oh, into, right, you know, killing right. characters off. I think that's a really strong way to, to really tug on the player's kind of heartstrings and stuff yeah. and make them more invested if bad stuff's happening or if you feel guilty because by killing Zaitan we made things way worse. Or, I would love you know, that. Stuff like that. I want that so badly. I want and, it to be bad that we up, killed Zaitan. I'm always up for characters being killed off as well. Like, <laughs> it, Yeah, definitely. You definitely need that. Man. No, because it'll be Casimir. You know, Casimir, come no! on. Just, no. Push her off a cliff or, you know, <laughs> like that. Push her off a cliff. Yes. <laughs> so callous. <laughs> I would just, stuff like that would be so good. But but the thing is, I mean, so, I mean I, I, again, we've, we've talked about this in one of the previous ones, but they, they, they attempted to do it with um, Belinda. Yeah. And... Nobody and cared. No, no, nobody cared. <laughs> she was just like, we didn't have any investment Hi, in her. My name's Belinda. I'm I'm going to go where there's there's dragon stuff on my own. <laughs> Boy, I'll be okay, and I'll see you all later for a dinner. <laughs> so don't mind the bullseye painted on my back. Uh, well, just, you know. <laughs> but like, if if it could actually be someone who you know who people people do like, you know, like, and I'm sorry to say it. Aurora, but Casimir, Casimir would be perfect. I agree with kill. you. I agree with you that if be, there was yeah. one that mess, they would kill off, that Casimir would, would be the one, but I don't want it. Yeah, her, her death would mess with Jory so well. <laughs> yeah. Just, be, yeah. just like know, push her over the edge. <laughs> so, so, with her. so, so Colin, weird. if you're watching, take notes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> just kill <laughs> Kill Casimir. No! <laughs> <laughs> What happened to you like want Queen like Jenna? A... What happened to Queen Jenna? You, Queen you Jenna. Alex, well, you were all for Queen Jenna well. being you know, off. About... <laughs> One of them, both Queen of them. Let's <laughs> kill anyone, dude. Yeah, that's the point. Where is Queen Jenna? Where is she? We've not seen her. We we got that little snippet of the amulet thing that showed the true heir to the throne and stuff like that, My which mind was a huge. Keeps going back to that, yeah. Yeah, it was a why that was her... like that was and... part of a whole section of an episode was protecting this amulet. You yeah. cannot tell me. You cannot. There. I mean, you can't tell me that that was only. Oh, it's because it was the reason Mordremoth was attacking that fort. You could have just said it was a relic. There, but no. Yeah, they said well, exactly. this shows the true heir to the Crichton throne. You don't just throw that in there and then never go back to it. 
<laughs> Plus, I mean, we, we still don't even know why Scarlet wanted to wake Mordremoth up. I mean, we, okay, people can say that it's part of this whole corruption thing, but that's not really going to, you know, why would he, he could, if he was conscious enough to corrupt her to do something like that, he could just wake up himself, right? Unless he wanted the magic fed straight to him, which I suppose is the strongest argument. But we, there's a lot about Scarlet we still don't know. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but there's a new theory going around um, based on the descriptions of the attacks on the Zephyrite ship, because a lot of the corpses were knife wounds, um, so everyone's like, oh, so yeah, Kate must have done it. Yeah, she oh. must have been the one to sabotage oh. it, especially if she wanted the egg all along. Well, I th I th There's stuff like that that we still not got answers for. Yeah. That, that'd be kind of weird, though, considering that, I mean, what what's the bloke's name? Is it Aaron? That yeah. Sort of yeah. Like, it, it just seems a completely arbitrary twist to make. Just go, the the, the bad guy that you spent the first episode chasing. Nah, it's, you know, it, 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 it was just some. It was just, <laughs> just some guy, guy. You know, it was just a guy. <laughs> it, it just it just kind of com completely in invalidates that mm. that character. But I think there was there, there was some kind of there was some kind of lore at some point that suggested that whatever Scarlet was doing, she was doing for for the right reasons if you know what i mean because yes. at, at yes. the point at the point that she started the um the azura was still experimenting on the silvari the char and humans were still at war and um i i guess at around that time the norn were in the process of being displaced by jormag and so everybody was just kind of, um everyone was just kind of not paying attention to what was going on so she was like right <laughs> let's get to work i'm gonna do something about this <laughs> right and her whole tirade originally started because she saw the vision of the eternal alchemy that mm -hmm. we saw possibly i believe that she saw more than we yeah, saw she will have done. but it so all it... started there and she when she died she just she did say like this is all part of a bigger purpose that you'll yeah. see tyria yeah. tyria needs me needs me exactly and, and that's, that's why i keep i keep thinking strange. it ties back to zaitan it keeps tying back because the vision was about zaitan we know for a fact now that the vision mm -hmm. was about zaitan dying it in and it yeah. seems that that's what corrupted things, that messed yeah. things up. Mm. So why would Tyrion need her, and then she goes and reroutes magic towards Mordremoth or something? Like, it's... I well, don't know, it's well, so strange. Well, I don't know, maybe if, if, you know, maybe Kate's taking, you know, taking a step back on Scarlet. Say if Scarlet was trying to influence a live dragon, Kate's going, well, obviously that doesn't work. Let's, <laughs> let's grab the egg and, and, and start from scratch. Mm -hmm. But why would she take it from us, who have only really been doing things, you know, from the same side as her? You know, why would she steal the egg why, from why us? Why would she do it in secret? Why wouldn't she just tell us what she's doing and yeah, have and us then she help has, her you know, unless it's mm -hmm. some kind of malicious... It's the, same, it's the same thing I remember saying about the Master of Peace. Like, he was like, oh, I've got loads of good, you know, big-ass things to go and do. See you later. It's like, well, we're on your side. You could just ask us to come with you and, yeah, you know, right. make it easier yeah. for you. And so if Kate is doing something that's good... Why wouldn't she tell us and keep us in the loop? You know, why right. would she just nick it and run off? It just seems stupid. Because plot device. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, that, 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 that's really uncharitable of me. But yeah, <laughs> I, I, I completely understand what I mean. But again, um, going on from with the whole Kaith angle, we'd still need to find out what was so terrible that she did. Because yeah. when... when, when killing when, Santa was pretty bad. Well, I felt quite bad about that. <laughs> I didn't. I think, <laughs> I think they're a bunch of dicks, to be honest. With you. But it, I mean, it goes back to Guild Wars One because I got so sick of the dry top area in Guild Wars One because I was playing that on my own with like really dumb henchmen. So I was <laughs> sick of them by the time I was done. But um, but but the weird thing is, it's like um, Kate doesn't instigate the the centaur slaughter. But you know, I did notice she doesn't hang about before joining in. Yeah. So, you know, but it's you know that that really wasn't kind of Kate's fault. That was um, oh God, was it? Yeah, was it? Was it? Was it Fallon that? that yeah, she was just that? being a. She was just you know slagging them off and then what to kill them all. I don't know. It's yeah. just the the biggest problem I had with that um, patch was just that we did you know it was it hyped itself up to be all about Kate and her stuff that's going on, but she was just so impartial to everything. She was like, yeah, she really okay, just went sure. along with what Fallon. I'll just go along. Yeah, doing. let's kill these yeah. guys. Whatever. I, I'll, just, I'll tell you. Well, I don't really agree with this, but I love you, so okay. I trust yeah, you. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, it was, none of it was really her decision. We we haven't learned anything about Kate apart from you know she did that. Yeah. But it's not like it was a huge character um, progression thing because, you know, like she wanted to and she did it for these reasons. It was just, this is a thing that she'd done, but she didn't really, 
you know, didn't feel anything yeah. about it. It was no real if it, reason. If all those things that she did with Foul Lane, if she completely agreed with Foul Lane and it was her decision as well and helped her, I could see that being part of this big dark secret that she has. But as it as it played out, yeah, it, it totally seemed like a patch about Fowlin and the other Silvari that I can't remember the name of that she didn't like very much. Yeah. That's Kate, that's Kate really what. It. Yeah, that, I think yeah. so. It that's that's what the patch was about, you know. And we played as Kate going through stuff, but it was never, it never gave us answers. It never really, um, you know, showed us why Kate did it. You know, it was just like a going along with this thing, and they could have even worded it differently to give it more of a, you know, big implication. But it was just, it it, it was a shame because it felt like an empty patch, and I was really looking forward to getting some background to this character that really we've not been trusting for a year. Suspecting plus, that we shouldn't you know? trust. It's like, uh, yeah, we don't, don't have it's, concrete it's... proof that we should hate her <laughs> it's like yeah, exactly. maybe? Yeah, like, are, like are we should. supposed to like we don't even know are, are we supposed to hate her or <laughs> that's strange yeah but hey yeah we'll see what happens we'll maybe we'll episode, eight. episode eight episode eight answers we next. should get a trailer next, next week right episode eight. that's it we should yeah. get a trailer should, on j- tuesday next tuesday and then for the patch on the 13th, I think. Yep. Yep. And then 24th or 25th is the PAX show. So we've got a big month, actually, ahead it's, of us. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be a busy, 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 busy. Be a busy month. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good. Yes. Um, something else, uh, kind of the last topic I have here is um, these uh, kind of going completely off topic from all the serious lore talk that we've been talking about <laughs> but um there was some guild wars 2 statues that oh, yeah. were shown oh, there was so the cool. uh the shatterer so which which came with the collector's edition uh of the chinese edition yeah. um of the game um where whereas we got the ritlock statue uh china got a statue of the shatterer um, Way cooler. So Way cooler. cool. <laughs> um, uh, there's a, a statue of Zoja and a golem, which is uh, also a USB flash drive. You mm. actually can yeah. take Zoja out of the little base <laughs> and stick her into your computer, and she's an actual flash drive. Um, and then there was a Ritlock um, action figure type of. It was a yeah. little more like yeah, was... upright standing Ritlock, and he had all these accessories and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It was I mean, cool. <laughs> I mean, like I, I, I really like the, the the Zoja one, despite the fact I don't, I'm not big on the Azura type stuff anyway. But the fact that it's like a little USB hub and it lights up and you can move its arms yeah. and <laughs> so good. Yeah, I mean, I've said this before, but I think we really need more Guild Wars Two merchandise. Like, yeah. and m- I'm hoping that that was that was kind of like a test because it sold out. In they sold super out quickly. like instantly. I don't yeah. know how many they had. They're all sold through Amazon, and they were all <laughs> fairly expensive. They were all like, yeah, were like eighty to ninety dollars. Yeah, and, the but they sold out like instantly. Like I went there, yeah. they were all for sale. I saw the prices. I like clicked off to something. I shared it. I went back, and they were all sold out. <laughs> Joke, really? Bloody yeah, hell. they were it's they ridiculous. were sold out in like an hour. <laughs> So that's so, why I was hoping it's like a, it was wow. a test to see how many people would be interested in stuff like this. Yeah, because they, 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 they credited the artists that they were made by. Like, they weren't, it wasn't like the Ritlock statue. Like, I don't know what company or artist, like, designed yeah. the Ritlock statue, but it, that was like an official, this is an official Guild Wars thing. Whereas I kind of got the, the impression that these were created by an artist and they're endorsed. By Guild Wars yeah. 2, I got that impression. Like it was, it wasn't like mm. Guild Wars 2's product. Stuff. It was yeah. like yeah. we yeah. endorsed this artist and these things they created. I don't know. I felt this disconnect. Yeah, I mean it somehow. I mean, so so far, as as far as I'm aware, there's only ever been like two or three bits of Guild Wars 2 merchandise, and one was the a very exclusive T-shirt that you could only get at launch. <laughs> And the other two is the the Ritlock plushie, which I think mm-hmm. is back in stock at the moment. And the the only other thing is the art book, that yeah. you've, mm-hmm. that that sold out, and you've you've got to get it on yeah. eBay at the moment. So I, I yeah. really think that I really think they're missing a trick at the moment because if you, definitely, if, I mean oh, if, are, yeah. if if you look at if you ever go to the Bioware store, I love me some Bioware tat. I think it's great. <laughs> I've got like Dragon Age stuff and Mass Effect T-shirts. But the thing is, like Ma- Ma- Mass Effect Three is you know it's it's. Three years old this year, I think. 
and you know they're still pumping out you know new Mass Effect t-shirts mm. they're still, still pumping out Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 1 t-shirts and it's be such an easy thing to do because if you look at people like like Garrus or Tally Zora Bass uh, Normandy they're iconic and you have people like you know you, you have Destiny's Edge who are you know they're big icons in fact this leads me very quick nicely on to a Christmas present Hannah got me Ooh. <gasps> check that out Check that out. It's it's uh, it's a ste- it's a Steel Series mouse mouse yeah. pad. The with mouse a, pad. I was, I was yeah, like, yeah, I was wondering what it was. Series, they have like the keyboard awesome. and mouse as well for Guild Wars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's the books. I guess is another thing. Yeah. There's that. You know, a few toasters playing around well. somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's some headphones, yeah. but yeah. they're definitely missing stuff because out of yeah, any game type, time. the the most. Like the uh, unless it's something like Pokemon or something like the the type of game that's gonna sell the most would be an MMO because it's people that are so dedicated to this one oh, particular yeah. game. That's you know, true. MMOs are you know people spend thousands of hours and years playing these games, so they're that's gonna true. be the people that are gonna be buying merchandise or T-shirts or posters or anything. And Guild Wars Two has especially with uh, Destiny's Edge Two Point these collerful characters yeah, yeah, that everybody absolutely. loves yeah exactly oh my god i would kill anything. i would kill for jory and casimir statues i would kill <sighs> for something so like that like they just don't exist yeah i mean i mean like uh, like you were saying about those statues on amazon gone instantly if they filled stuff up if they filled their shop up on the website of you know jory casimir statues you know ritlock statues mm-hmm. Maybe not Jenna statues, because we've all got enough of those in our bank from our mother's <laughs> birthdays. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, like, the, the, the big iconic characters, and, you know, maybe even, like, could you just imagine if you've got, like, a scale model of Zaitan with all of, like, the various oh, heads and necks going out? Yeah. Weird stuff like, too. how awesome would that be? I mean, obviously, it'd take an artist a while to kind of make it, but, like, the, like I'm saying, the big iconic stuff, it'd be great. It'd be a money spinner for sure. 100%. Way more plushies, you know, tons yeah, more, totally. tons yeah. more Timey plushie, plushie, timey plushie. Please. Plushie. Who wouldn't <laughs> buy that? I want like a wee claw of Jormag plushie. That'd be the cutest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you know, like the the crunch is like 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 with like the other uh, game that with like Wow is like their store merchandise. I mean, they've got so much mm-hmm. awesome merchandise stuff, and that if you love a game like that. You you're just like a kid in a candy shop. Well, so exactly. Much That's stuff what I'm for you to go like, woohoo! You got you got the like countless T-shirts, and then they got lots of plushies, and <clears throat> excuse me, they, they even got Murloc mugs, you know, and like mm-hmm. just like yep. so many things they're doing, which is so brilliant because it because all these people that love the game went, yes, I'll do anything for that. I'll pay fifty bucks for it. Yes, now. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I've, been, really I've been looking to buy anything of that. I can. That's Guild Warsy. I mean, I've got, yeah. I have a different mouse mat. I've got the dragon one. It's drawn oh, all over, nice. so because I <laughs> scribble notes on it sometimes and stuff. You know, I've got the books. I've got, you know, I I was gonna buy the keyboard and mouse, but I prefer my mouse anyway. So you know, I'm not gonna do that. But you know, anything I can see that's even slightly Guild Warsy, I would pick up in an instant. You know, yeah. um, but it's just I was not lucky available. enough. I picked up like the strategy guide. I wouldn't. I don't really use it, but it's a really nice book. I've actually got it here. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it it's all within su- arm's reach. It's a super nice, like, Ooh, thick lovely. card. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, yeah, really? it's, really you well. know, super in-depth. It's got a bunch wow. of artwork and maps and stuff. I even bought this stupid wee flip notebook thing, which has, like, small versions of the maps on it, so easy oh, to do cool. map completion oh, and stuff. Oh, my but gosh. It's like, awesome. I would be really <laughs> happy by anything, and I've been looking for a good Go Wars t-shirt for fucking ages as well. So Arena Night, if you're watching, send us a T-shirt. That'd be really good. I've, I've actually got a Guild Wars. Two, I don't have it in here, but I've, I've got. I've, I managed to find a Guild Wars Two T-shirt on eBay. And mm-hmm. like, um, and like we, like we've been saying, this, this is the thing. If, if we're going to eBay to, you know, find Guild Wars Two merchandise right. from third, from third party sellers, like yeah, you, might, I, I guess they, they might get a little bit of money out of merchandising, or so out, out of, um, out of licensing. But yeah. Just, just, just sell more stuff. Sell it, please. Yeah, if they, you know, I'd be well. I would be so much happier buying stuff from, mm. you know, their website than right. on eBay from some seller that picked it up, and is selling it for you right. know, twice the price. Right. Just so, happened yeah. to be at a convention and pick something up for free or very got to, little, got a and toaster. then is, you know, <laughs> yeah. selling it to people who exactly. really want it. Went. 
we would just want to go to the want it. <laughs> side. We won. We just want to buy some stuff. I've, st- I've, I've even kept all of the gem store codes I've got, like the cards you get <gasps> really? and stuff. I've kept all of them. Oh I've my gosh. Like, I need more stuff. Make a coffee stuff. table out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Since we're uh, showing off swag, I know. Got the yeah, holiday swag. card. Yeah, where's mine? Are we Happy holidays with the quaggins. Oh, you oh can't see God. it. That's, can... that's so awesome. I think there's a picture on your uh, on your Twitter though. That I, put, I yeah. took a picture of him and put it on the Twitter. Yeah. They they like need to make quaggin plushies so bad. Quaggin like, plushies. God. Oh my yes. God. This would be. Selling like hotcakes, you know, if they're like pink and blue quaggins to sell. They could well, have... Real life versions of the quaggin <laughs> backpacks and stuff, that'd be I so want, yes! Yeah. <laughs> Cat. I want to make a quaggin backpack. <laughs> oh. Hey, buddy. <laughs> they Scott. could, like, especially with, like, <laughs> s- statues or, or pretty much anything, I mean, all they need to do is hold a contest and say, okay, sculptors, artists, make a whatever statue. Whoever yeah. wins the grand prize is that we will take your artwork, duplicate it, sell it as official merchandise, and you get whatever percentage of all the sales. Yeah. Are you kidding me? People would go insane for that. 100%. <laughs> they, and they used, they've done contests like that before. I think a lot of the Hollow Monuments rewards were de- like designed by, a couple of them are designed by players yeah. and stuff like that, some I, of the I, weapons I, and stuff. Things of that. So like th- that'd be totally oh, viable. Yeah. It would design be like the community pieces, morale. Design the weapons or yeah. the headpieces for Winners Day or whatever, and then they made a virtual version of it in the it game. Should be, it, oh, it's I wish something they we could do easily stuff like that do. Again. I guess they're busy well, no, working they're on doing, this expansion uh, for us. Decal contests. <laughs> like, <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. Mm. But yeah, we. we we will. We would love to spend money on your game, Arena Net. Let us take my money. Jeez. Let us spend take money on money. you. <laughs> Actually, this morning the uh, the Zoja, um, what do you call it? The Zoja statue was back up this morning. I don't know if it still is. Let me see. Oh, it was cool. it was available this morning. Let's see. Is let's this, see. Oh, it, it is still available. The Zoja uh, at, at the time of recording, I should say, <laughs> it's uh. Actually, you can it, pre-order it. It says in stock on January seventh. Yeah, um, it, nice. it is. It is only on the American. Oh yeah, yeah. Well. that's I mean, right. I, like, I did a problem see that. With that arena net. Yeah, <laughs> I did you see might, that. Uh, come round your house and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I just pop round, just like yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo. What's up? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that is. That's kind of odd. But I think you know. Um, it, it kind of ties in a little bit to what this to what we were saying earlier about you know if they're planning a big expansion and everything they might not necessarily have the time to focus on yeah no definitely um, other it's fair enough pieces, yeah and yeah. and just going back to this there's, there, there's a lot of other stuff that I'd love to see as well kind of like game polishing type stuff like you know hopefully finally we'll get um, craftable precursors and I know that I think people have been banging on about these since launch and um, hopefully it does happen one day. It's something that I'd love to see, but um, what um, what hope they blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hopefully one of the, you know can I hear more? <laughs> one of the big announcements that they they might be having is might be guild halls, might be guild halls. Yeah, because they had a CDI like for that. that not too long ago. Mm-hmm. The same with the raid stuff. So yeah, we've got yeah, lots of hints. Nothing. For a lot sure. of hints for those. Yeah, that would be really good. All right, I think we need to wrap up the show, but if there's any more um, Guild Wars 2 topics that I missed that you guys wanted to discuss, I think we covered just about everything. I think so. I mean, it went the way every episode does, where we just end up talking about expansions. And And merchandise. And merchandise. Time to plushies. And can I say uh, that the mini Drubert's ghost that came out (laughs) In the gem store, that was that was uh. Tom Nuts. That was amazing. Oh my god! <laughs> I gave Peter Freeze shit for that on Twitter, and he's like, "I had nothing to do with it. I swear hey, to yeah, God." Yeah, whatever, mate. Sure I was anything. like, "Sure, sure." <laughs> so good. That was awesome. 
I, 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 um, I did buy the the mini avatar of the pale tree because I do like oh, I, that, I do yeah. like Silvari Khan and stuff. Do you like? You Silvari didn't buy a uh, Lord Farron elf uh, in his in his speedo. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> damn. <laughs> no, because uh, uh, weirdly, I actually got Lord Farron in his speedos to drop during the secret at South Sun. So <laughs> you, I've you got, got Lord Farron speedos to drop. That's um. Ah. Uh, oh. That's that's Ooh. impressive. I bet you didn't even have to buy the wall calendar. <laughs> Someone needs to make that. Some artist needs to Lord actually Farron make the cal- Lord Farron wall calendar of 2015. Oh. <laughs> Show no. up his red panties. <laughs> I mean, I mean, his, that's his fancy panties. <laughs> fancy panties. Scarlet liked it. Scarlet was very amused by his scarlet uh. panties. So good, dearie man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, before we go, um, I uh, will let you guys pimp yourselves out and your channels and your projects and stuff. So, what's going on in your worlds? <laughs> I see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> one of, one of you two go first. One okay, you go first. I have a YouTube channel and. <laughs> I have not been uploading <laughs> as much as I probably should have been. So 2015 is the year. So get subscribed and prepare yourselves, um, <laughs> or, or something. My body is ready, Corvus. <laughs> All about the hype train. All about the hype train. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Photoshop <laughs> your your Corvus's head on the front of that hype train. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Alex, and yeah. nominate you. Okay, so I live at the RPG Shack, and I'm currently <laughs> battling my way through various Guild Wars 2 achievement videos, as well as continuing to play Wasteland 2, which I just continue... <laughs> I just, it's a game where you try and help people, and it just goes wrong. I, <laughs> like, I... I I, I said to a bloke, I'll take a letter to your sister. So I gave her the letter, and then, and then she shot herself. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes. actually, actually while, while while I'm here, I would like to say a massive thank you to, sorry, Aurora Peachy for other, actually other, having other... me on it. Oh, others. There are you, you go. There? Yep. Are I'm you there? there? Is that you? Oh, brilliant! I would like to say a massive thank you to Aurora Peachy for um, continuing to have me on Gilead because my sub count and my view count has just rocketed since been on here. So. Thank oh, awesome! And, Yay! Um, but yeah, there's 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 a ton of really weird and wonderful RPG stuff so if you're into that kind of thing come up come on over and say hi <laughs> and he does the ever popular um, black line weapon uh, reviews yes. that uh, just about every youtuber does, every good worst <laughs> youtuber does because they're easy yeah exactly they're brilliant it's good though because everyone has a different opinion that's of them true everyone story. does have yeah. a different opinion of them yeah yeah so look out for my black line <laughs> weapon video <laughs> <laughs> We need to get on Guild Gab and all at the same time do a review of the Black Line weapons. <laughs> be so good. Yes. Uh, Anything yes. going on in your world, Ak? I, I know a lot is going on in your world, but mm. uh... <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Well, not not to go into um, major detail, but um. My life's been having some major f-ups, and uh, such as my computer's hard drive dying. So I am, mm. I haven't been able to actually go into Guild Wars 2, and I've I've tried doing it on this aging years years and years old laptop, and the poor girl just can't do it. You know, she's trying, and it's just like, oh, darling, no, just just <laughs> don't. Uh, oh, and so, like like Ritlock Brimstone, I've been lost in the mist, as it were. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I I I'm also visually impaired, so if he's blind, then I'm even more like Redlock. And uh, Dude, eventually, yes. I'm going to get. I will get a new computer eventually, with a few within a few months, and then I can have a, I can be able to get my new apartment and everything, and then I can finally start making some decent videos and Love get my own channel up and running. Until then, it's just I'm lost in the mist for now. You <laughs> like are Redlock, uh, you so. are Redlock Brimstone. You you are truly yeah, channeling. Everything he is. <laughs> Pretty much, yep. <yeah. clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope that uh, we have helped you get off to a good start for 2015. 
um, happy holidays and happy new year to everyone. Yeah. And thank you for watching. And we will be back happy soon new year. for Woo. the next Guild Gap. Thank you for watching. Setting up. I don't know what this is. What are we? <laughs> It's, <laughs> it's, it's you uh, spin around. Then. Yeah, it's it, it's like the suit from Red Dwarf. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh God, remember. <laughs> so circle, good. triangle, square. What? Wait, what? C circle, C square, <laughs> triangle, triangle, bear, bear. bear. <laughs> I, I don't know, know what's happening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. See you next time, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye. I don't know what's happening anymore! <laughs> I've lost track of this hype train! Uh, I love Go-Gab. Oh, it's so much fun! <laughs>